Hi everyone, Ian here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how you can use PDM, which is the Python Development Master, for managing packages for your Python applications, and how it differs from other Python package management tools like pipenv and poetry. Now, PDM is a fairly recent addition to the Python package management scene, having had its v001 release back in January 2020, so only two years ago. And what makes it extra special compared to any other management tool that I've uh, shown on this channel is that it allows us to use packages without the need for a virtual environment. Uh, so you can see without a virtual environment at all. Um, with other tools, we'd use a virtual environment which creates a clone of Python and some of the installed packages in a folder on our system. And so therefore, when we add packages to it, they're isolated from our main system packages. And I've been fairly clear about preaching how that um, creates a good situation. We have an isolated virtual environment that we can work with for our project and why that's so important. So you might be wondering how we can get away with not having a virtual environment at all. Well, PDM is uh, one of the first package managers to support a local packages directory, which is part of PEP or is PEP582. Um, which is introduces this concept um, for Python versions uh, 3.8 and above. And so therefore, if a PI packages directory, uh, so a done, uh, double underscore PI packages directory is found, it will be preferred over a global site packages. So this is um, very su similar to something like Node.js's package manager. Uh, and uh, so npm, where the node modules folder is created within the project being worked upon for dependencies. Um, and if we head to the um, creator's Frostming uh, of PDM's website, he talks about all the problems that virtual environments create um, and why this project was created. And this is an example of the sort of st structure that you can expect the uh, PDM to produce. Um, and so in this scenario, we won't be duplicating um, anything um, and we don't have that kind of nested complexity that we do in a virtual environment. So I'm going to show you how to use this here um, and we're going to see how it differs from some of the other tools, like I said, like pipm and Poetry. So uh, to get started, uh, you'll need to uh, install PDM using one of the installation methods given. So if we head back to the website, so you can get it on uh, over curl, but obviously you can do it through brew or any of the other pip tools. I'm going to be using um, uh, brew for this because I'm on a Mac. So let's just do and make that a bit bigger so you can see it. So brew install PDM, and I've already installed this, so it's probably going to be cached. Um, yeah, and so let's uh, initialize a project and let's change into an appropriate directory to do that. So how to use PDM, that seems like an appropriate uh, name for a directory. So if we cd into that and use PDM init, then we'll be asked a bunch of questions about our system. Now you can see on mine I have a ton of different uh, versions of Python. I have lots that I've installed through PyEnv and the original system one, which is 2.7 on this machine. Um, I'm going to opt for number two because that's the 3.10 version that I've installed through um, uh, PyEnv and that's the one that I prefer it to be using most recent. So let's go and install that. I'm going to say that I do want to have this uploaded to PyPy so we can talk about how uh, in talks to PyPy or we'd use it to talk to PyPy. I'm going to call it the names that it's defaulting to here. I'm going to say there's no um, license, just in. And I'm going to allow anything. So let's open this with code and have a look at what we are dealing with. So we end up with two files. 
pi project file. So let's uh, make that a bit bigger. Pi project .toml that we would expect in um, other projects like um, poetry. So this is very similar to as you'd see in poetry. And we end up with a PDM configuration as well, which tells us which version of Python we are using. So if you want to add dependencies, let me bring up the terminal within here. Um, so if we add a dependency, we just add requests in. We can see that it's just added that as a dependency within there. It's possibly slightly too large. <laughs> it's like a little bit smaller. Um, so we can see that it's just added dependencies of requests to the latest version there. Um, just add another one. Let's add Flask as well. So nothing un out of the ordinary here, except for that we are creating our dependencies within this folder, Pi Packages. Um, we can see Flask, we can see the actual binaries that we would expect normally, and then all our dependencies that they've pulled in as well. So normally in our virtual env, we would also end up with Python symlink binaries in something a structure like this, but we don't end have that because this is just being added to our system Python, the one that I specified in this toml file. Um, and then we also end up with our lock file which specifies the exact versions of everything that we are using. Uh, and much the same as we get with poetry again, so a lock file. So if we want to add developer uh, development dependencies, we would just do that similarly using um, the D flag. So this is actually kind of falling back to a default that um, was used in some of the earlier versions. So this adds a dev dependencies to the Pi project toml. And so you can see there we have dev dependencies as well now. So Pi test 701. Now the nice thing that we also get is that we can specify groups of dependencies. So we've actually specified here a group called dev um, as our a set to, uh, as the name of our uh, dependencies. So we can do another one here. So we're doing dev dependency with a group, and I'm going to name it format, and then I'm going to say I want to install black. So pdm hyphen dg. Um, and let's go install that. In fact, actually, look at that, that's silly. I haven't actually put add. There we go, dg format black. It's crazy the amount of dependencies some of these things kind of have to go off and get. Uh, but there we'll see that we've now got another dev dependency, but it's actually named under format. So it's not a dev, it's formats, um, but it's probably could do with being under the same one, to be honest, because, uh, yeah, you, they're all dev dependencies at the end of the day. Anyway, um, if, therefore, we wanted to install these dependencies, so we can actually delete this folder. Um, and we can just do pdm install. And it goes ahead and installs dependencies and everything that we would want. And we can filter this down by doing like pdm install dash uh, g for the name of the group that we want to install. So format, for instance, or dev or if we were doing test or something like that as our named group. 
um, we can see a list of what's installed with PDM uh, list. So we've got everything there. And if we want to see how that is in terms of a graph, we can in fact, just dive from there, we can do it with PDM dash list graph. So we end up with this nice kind of seeing what are the, where the dependencies are coming in for each of the um, parts of a project there. We can run commands or scripts with just a simple PDM run. So again, similar to many other tools that we would use. Uh, so we do flask run, and then the name of say a, a particular uh, port we want this to run on. Now this isn't gonna work because uh, we don't have an app file, but you can see the example is actually trying to run flask. So uh, that will work. Or if we wanted to, we could also have a um, scripts definition in our project toml. So let's do that now. I'm going to specify tool.pdm.scripts. And then we just say a start command is going to be flask. Run dash p. In fact, actually. And then when I try and run this, I will get uh, the same error. So you may recall my poetry vid. Um, I mentioned about there's a minor annoyance in poetry in that you have to add libraries to read in environment files uh, for each project. So um, that's going to be done away with in Poetry soon, uh, soon because actually there's going to be plugins available. But PDM kind of gets uh, re solves this with a um, being able to specify environment files within the Pi Project toml. So uh, what I'm going to do here is actually copy a script from another folder. So how to use pipenv. So if we take a look at this script, it's very basic. It's just using requests. And if I change this to just run Python script, so our start command, pdm run starts. Um, oh, so I need to actually put the pi. Let's try again. And it's saying that there's no invalid URL, no scheme supplied, because basically in this script file, it's trying to read in some variable. Some variable does not exist. So we want to define that in an environment file. So let's do that here. And we're going to set this to Google. In fact, HTTPS, Google.com. And when we run this, is still going to complain. Uh, what we need to do is change these commands. So we've got a start dot command and then start dot n file, and we can specify the n file just local. So this should now hopefully you can see it. In fact, actually, it says there loading the m file. Uh, so everything that is being printed out from Google. Um, we can see it returns a whole load of content, so it's working. And this is kind of annoying that we've had to split them apart like this, but actually we can achieve the same for every file if we do this kind of global specification of an M file. So if we do this underscore m file and specify as env, then that's going to be applied for every single command that we have in here. 
Now, similar to uh, poetry, you can build a PDM project just with PDM build. And this is kind of uh, the same as we expect in poetry to get the tar, GZ, and the wheel file um, ready for us to publish. But PDM doesn't actually have off the bat a publishing a way to publish that like poetry does but it does have support for plugins so we can do pdm plugin add and then pdm publish so it installs plugin pdm publish um, and then if we wanted to publish that builds we just do pbm publish with our password now, I'm not going to do that because that is an empty project and it's not particularly interesting. Nobody wants to see my script file, I would doubt. So uh, it's just really nice that we can go and uh, build on a PDM quite simply. Uh, additionally, there is also a whole bunch of um, so awesome PDM. So there's a whole bunch of other plugins that you can use. So you can shell, bump. So this awesome PDM repo is really useful. Um, and you can see all the sorts of plugins that you could use with PDM. Um, one final thing to say is that uh, if we head back to the P main PDM repo, so main PDM website so we can see on the home website that there's a few things that we can add so shell completion for pdm uh, zsh which is my favorites the one that you may have noticed is that these in the script requests isn't actually being resolved at the moment so um, we need to tell VS Code, how to do that. So this is the command to do it. We do it in VS Code settings.json. If we create a folder, dot VS Code, and then stick a settings file in there. And then change these to the version of Python that we're using, which is 3.10 then hopefully when we go back at this you can see it's picking up requests now and uh, we can go and nip off and see that actually it's digging into the pi packages folder that we just created so yeah that's been a fairly brief and whistle stop tour of an introduction to pdm i quite like this um it would have solved quite a few problems with uh tools that I've tried to build similar to this in the past um, and I like the way this is proceeding it look good it'd be good to see how this uh, kind of future versions of this kind of and the adoption of it and things like that um, yeah so I hope you enjoyed this it's a nice uh, addition to our introduction to different Python package management tools and uh, if you did enjoy this, then I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's really nice seeing everyone sign up. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye for now.